Hi, I'm Pete and welcome to Just Two Acres Farm. During the past few weeks, as time allows, I've been working on stretching the wire for our new heifer yard and it's a woven wire fence, four foot high. I think that a woven wire fence properly stretched is a thing of beauty and it'll last me for many, many years and I don't have to worry about the cattle getting through it. It is strong with no electricity required. In this video, what I'm gonna do is give you a really concise how-to on building a woven wire fence and stretching the fence. When I learned how to stretch fence, I had to look through a ton of YouTube videos and it took forever because everything was so drawn out. So I wanna move this right along, give you the tools that you need to do your own fencing. But first, a quick tour. This is about a 60 by 60 foot heifer yard. Um, it's a short fence as far as woven wire goes, which makes it easier to stretch. It has brace corners and tension wires to hold the corners. It has two gates. It has a gate for a person to go through that's four foot wide down at that corner. And then over here is a cattle gate that's 12 foot wide and I can also get through this with the tractor if I need to get in here. The idea behind this yard, if you didn't see our previous video, is to be able to uh, separate our heifers that we're gonna send to butcher so they don't get bred by our bulls. So it doesn't need to be a very big yard. I did a video on driving the post previously, but for those of you who didn't see it, these are eight foot long pressure treated posts, five inches round, driven into the ground three feet, super solid. The posts are 12 feet apart, except where I need to brace at the corners and at the ends of the fence, those are six feet apart. Bracing the corners is a really important part of building a woven wire fence because these wires are under quite a bit of tension. And if you don't brace the corner, the corner post is gonna lean in from that tension. So what you do is you have a compression member here that's being squeezed like this from the tension here. And then you have a diagonal brace that takes tension here. And that brings that tension from this post down to the ground, taking the tension off of this corner post. So the first step after you set your posts is to set these horizontal compression members on the corners and the end runs. The horizontal compression members are made from the same material, they're five inch round posts that I drove in the ground for the verticals. I center them above the ground at about three foot high for a four foot high fence. And since I'm working by myself, I screw a block on one end of the post to hold one end of the horizontal brace up. Then I get a post and I lay it on the block that I screwed in on one end and hold the other end, move it up and down and look and see when it's approximately level. And then I mark where it needs to be cut. Then I cut it to length with a chainsaw, trying to keep a square end so it butts into the vertical post evenly. And if I've cut it right, it'll friction fit between the two uprights, and that way I won't have to hold it up anymore. Then I drill a hole on each vertical post on both sides of the horizontal member and drive in 10 inch spikes. I leave the inside spike that's facing toward the run of the fence sticking out so later on it'll keep the brace wire supported. I use 9 gauge wire for my tension wires, it's really strong stuff, but it's not the easiest thing to work with. Before I put the wire on I drive a staple at the low end of where the wire will go and I leave that staple sticking out enough to catch the wire. And then I hang another staple from the open loop on the first staple and that way the wire has something to move against as I'm tightening it up instead of getting stuck in the grain of the wood. Then I attach a ratchet tightener to one end of the wire and secure it with fencing crimps. I unroll the wire in a figure eight pattern around the posts. And then I cut the wire to length and start it through the ratchet tightener.
I want this wire to be really tight so that the corner post doesn't lean and I use a special ratchet tensioner to tension it up on the ratchet. It's really tight when I'm done. In fact, when I pluck it with my finger, it should sing a little bit, kind of like a music string. Next, I put three staples on the lower end just to make sure the wire stays in place and doesn't slide up on the post. And I leave those three staples a little loose so the wire can move within them if I need to tighten the wire further later on. And now it's time to stretch the fence. Stretching fence is something that I could have never figured out by myself. Setting the post is one thing, and that's pretty common sense. But stretching a fence and having it stay tight after it's fastened to the post is a real trick. So I'm gonna go through that now. I start by unrolling the fence all the way down the run. Then, and this is a time consuming part, I have to remove the vertical wire pieces from the horizontals at the end of the fence so I can wrap the horizontals around the post one by one. So I cut each vertical wire in half and then I turn them so each is separate. Then I grasp the end of each with the pliers, loosen up the curl that's around the horizontal wire, and then I can pull them all off one by one. While I'm doing this, it's handy to have an empty five gallon bucket to toss all the pieces of cut off wire into. I don't want the cattle eating or stepping on these. For this part, it's important to note that all woven wire fences are constructed differently and you may be taking the verticals off in a different fashion. This is a red brand fence that I bought at Tractor Supply. Other fences are designed, I think, so that you can more easily take the verticals off and usually the fence manufacturer has a recommended method for quickly removing them. Now it's time to stand the fence up and temporarily secure it to the end post. Next, take the top wire of the fence and secure it to itself by wrapping it around the post and winding it on itself. They make a special tool for doing the winding, but I just do it with pliers and my fingers. It's kind of rough on my hands though. After you've done the top wire, you just work all the way down the post, one by one, securing each horizontal wire in the same fashion as the top wire. After that, I drive two staples per wire to further secure it. Now it's time to put some tension on the fence, and this is always the fun part. First, I stand the fence up all along the run, and then it's time to install a set of clamping boards to hold the end of the fence while it's being tensioned. You can't tension it directly from the wires. You gotta have something that clamps them and holds them all together. I use two old 2x4s with five bolts to clamp around the fence. You can also buy a similar thing that they make out of steel, but the 2x4s work just fine. I locate the clamping board so that I have enough fence to later wrap around the end post after I've tensioned it. I tighten up the bolts with an impact driver, and then I cut the fence and wrap each wire around the clamping boards. I learned to do this after stretching a few runs because sometimes the wires will slip through the clamping boards a little bit. So wrapping the wires around keeps them from slipping when I put tension on the fence. Now it's time to set up the chains and the come-alongs. For this run I'm pulling from another post but I don't recommend this as it can make the post tilt. Now I have this post driven three foot tight into the ground and it's a short fence run, so it's okay here. I'm not putting as much tension on it as I would for a long fence run. What I usually do is I position the tractor with a bucket loader at the end of the run, and then I can position the bucket to the right height so I can hook the chains to the bucket and actually use the tractor as a weight to pull the fence from. I use two come-alongs, one at the top of the fence and one at the bottom. 
I found I can better control the tension on all the wires of the fence by using two come-alongs rather than one that I try and balance in the middle of the fence because the fence starts to tilt one way or the other and you don't get the tension you want. I ratchet the come-alongs to put a little tension on the fence and then I walk down the line and straighten the fence against each post. Then I start tightening the fence up, alternating between the top and the bottom come along to incrementally tighten both at about the same rate. The idea is I don't want any sagging anywhere in the fence and it takes quite a bit of tension to achieve that. Now it's time to start securing the end and this is a tricky process. You have to transfer the tension that's in the fence to the end post. I do that by securing each wire one by one starting in the middle of the fence and working alternately toward the top and the bottom of the fence. To start the process I drive two staples very tight on the wire I'm going to cut. This helps keep it tight while I'm securing it to the post. Then I remove the vertical wires just like I did on the opposite corner post except this time I'm only doing the verticals for one horizontal wire at a time. And then the big moment, I cut the wire and as I cut it, I watch on the post where I've secured it with staples to see if it slips at all on the corner post. Luckily I rarely have them shift when they're secured with the two staples as I showed you. You can also see when you cut each wire, the end post shifting a little bit as it starts to take up the tension on the fence. That's when you know the fence is tight. Next I wrap the wire that I've just cut around the post and wrap it on itself just like I did on the other end. I use the same process for all the wires, working one by one from the middle outwards. And when you get the last one free, your fence is tensioned. Now it's time to go down the fence and secure the fence to the intermediate posts. And that will actually add a little bit more tension to the fence because as you go to each post you want the bottom wire of the fence to be at least a few inches above the ground to help prevent corrosion of that wire. And that pulling up and down will add a little bit to the tension. I drive one staple at each horizontal wire and I leave those staples a little loose on the wire so the wire can move as the fence expands and contracts. Now the only thing left to do is hang the gates and that's a pretty simple process. There's just two holes to drill in each post and then you thread in the gate anchors, hang the gate on, make sure it's level and make sure that it clears any unevenness in the ground. No doubt about it, it's a lot of work to build a woven wire fence correctly. Our normal field fencing is just T-posts and two wires and we can put that up in no time. But stretching all four sides of this fence took me probably a day and a half altogether working here and there. The great thing is I know that this is a cattle proof fence and the heifers will be safe from the bulls in here. The next thing I got to do is go in the barn and weld up the feeder panel and get the pen inside ready and then I can cut a hole in here and it'll be all done. I hope this video was informative. Stretching a wire fence doesn't really require a lot of tools, it just requires a particular process. So I hope you learned that here and I'll see you next time.